Hi there, I hope that you have been doing well. My name is Njuta Wabura and this is Ask the Nutritionist. So if you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe. Put your notifications bell on so that you can get notified every single time I post a video. So today's video, I'm going to talk about the Mediterranean diet. And the Mediterranean diet has been classified as a world heritage by UNESCO. And is actually part of the Portuguese gastronomic identity. Now, the Mediterranean diet usually consists of vegetables, fruits, high quality bread, unprocessed cereals, dried and fresh legumes like beans, chickpeas, dried fruits, nuts, not to forget the olive oil, which is the main source of fat, as well as fish, you know, that replaces the red meat in most households within the Mediterranean region. Now, there are several studies that now show that there are many, many benefits of a Mediterranean diet that could range from improving mental wellness, maintaining healthy lifestyles, preventing heart attacks, strokes, type 2 diabetes, premature death, ETC, ETC. There are so many studies that have been coming up of late. Now, there is no one right way to actually follow the, this Mediterranean diet because, you know, as you may imagine, there are many countries around the Mediterranean Sea and people in these different areas may have different food components that they actually consider as Mediterranean diet. Now, so today's video is about some five common food components consumed in Portugal and the benefits of each and whether they count as a Mediterranean type of lifestyle. Now, first on this list is bacalhau. Now, anyone who has been to Portugal or lives there knows that this is one of the most iconic symbols in the Portuguese cuisines. Now, bacalhau is made from salted codfish that is found in the cold waters of Norway. And there are tons of recipes that you could actually make from the fish. Literally, one each day of the year without repeating the same dish twice. Now, codfish has a mild flavor for sure and is packed with protein, B vitamins, minerals, phosphorus, selenium, but it is actually very crucial to note that it is slightly lower in omega-3 fatty acids than any other fatty fish. And so this is considered as part of the Mediterranean diet. Second on this list is pork. So it is safe to say that there can be no Portugal without pork or no pork without Portugal. So the love of pork is so complete that they actually consume every single part of the pig apart from the squill. Believe it or not, while the consumption of pork may actually fall short from the Mediterranean dietary pattern, when it is consumed in Portugal, it's actually unprocessed but also cured. And pork is high in protein as well as many other vitamins and minerals. So it's very also common to find dried pork which can also have a very high protein content as high as 89 percent and it could also be very beneficial to repair muscles um you know when you consume it now pork also has equal amounts of both saturated and unsaturated fats which is a good thing and it's also rich in thiamine, selenium zinc vitamins b12 b6 niacin phosphorus iron and so on you get the grip right all right now, next on this list is the soups and stews of Portugal. So, in fact, there's a Portuguese proverb that says that of soup and love, the first is actually the best. Now, literally, anything can go into a soup in Portugal, and the most common ones being caldo verde and feijoada. Now, the caldo verde is simply a kale soup that could have any other legumes of choice, when the feijoada is a bean stew that is made in beans, tomatoes, carrots, cabbage, some pork, some meat, here and there, depending on you. Now, this is usually served with rice, depending on the region that you're actually consuming it from, and the vegetables and the legumes used for these soups are a great source of protein and fiber, respectively, making them part of the Mediterranean type of diet. Now, olive oil is another major component of the Portuguese cuisine and it is easy to find it in any restaurant, literally, and it is rightfully held for its health benefits. 
So if you are not basing your food in olive oil in Portugal, you are doing life all wrong. And you need to rethink your strategies. Now, olive oil is rich in omega-3 and omega-6 um, that support the heart function. It is anti-inflammatory for sure, high in antioxidants and antibacterial properties. And olive oil has therefore been named as a gold standard for cooking oil, which of course you have the extra virgin olive oil topping off that list. And so this makes up part of the Mediterranean diet once again. Now there's no way I can leave out the Portuguese desserts and also the egg. And the Portuguese are truly known for their sweet tooth, which was in fact encouraged and blessed by the church. Believe it or not, pastry shops and bakers in Portugal make so many pastries and it has been said that there are over 200 different pastries across this country. Now, most of these actually trace their origin from the Moors who brought sugarcane with them into this country. In fact, today, most of these desserts still have some religious name connotations. As it is, the bread and the quality of the pastry in the country is undoubtedly very, very high, with most of the pastries actually being made from unprocessed flour. However, some of them may actually contain a lot and a lot, a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot of sugar. And it could actually be advisable to have them sparingly. Now, all in all, with most of them being made from unprocessed flour, this means that they are a great source of fiber and complex carbohydrates, which again makes up for the Mediterranean diet. Now, other food components that I must mention on this video are a variety of fruits, variety of nuts, seeds, tubers, seafood, herbs and spices, and coffee that is actually widely consumed across the country. It is also a norm for people to go for walks after consuming meals. In this case, of course, the coffee might not count as part of the Mediterranean diet, but this is something that is a norm. I must also say that Portugal has also a wide array of food and dietary patterns that have been externally influenced. Now the bottom line is that this Mediterranean lifestyle can certainly be very satisfying and be very beneficial if mastered well or if you modify it according to your needs. For some, it may work and for others, not really so much. All in all, it is crucial to find a good, good balance and a personalized way for optimal nutrition. I hope that you have loved this video. Please go ahead, comment, tell me, have you ever experienced a Mediterranean diet? Are you thinking about it? Do you have so many questions? Please post them below and I'll be happy to answer them. So please subscribe. Until next time, bye.